the frequency and intensity of extreme heat events is increasing in Europe. By 2050, about half the European population may, may be exposed to high or very high risk of heat stress during summer. I'm not handling it well. It's really hot, too, too hot, and it just wears you out. Welcome to the day, a day that was the hottest of the year here in Germany, peaking at nearly 40 degrees Celsius in some places. Europe's been baking under unusually high temperatures for the time of year. Officials in France say two people have died of heat-related illnesses and hundreds have been hospitalised. In Spain, authorities said a wildfire broke out during a fourth day of stifling temperatures, sending out a huge cloud of ash and smoke. Two farmers died, apparently trying to flee the blaze. Attractions across the continent, including the Eiffel Tower in Paris, had to be closed because of the heat. Relief, however, is in sight, but long-term temperatures are trending upwards. The EU's Climate Change Service says Europe is now the fastest warming continent. As the church bells ring in Seville, the Spanish authorities are sounding the alarm, a heat wave warning. It's morning here and already 31 degrees Celsius. Temperatures could rise to 43 degrees during the day. We have to be constantly looking for shade, the air conditioning in the car, whoever has it. And look, we wear a bracelet that beeps for the heat. It's terrible for me. I mean, I don't sleep well, insomnia and then I get heat stroke. I stop eating and I can't concentrate. And it's not only Spain. Across Europe, people are struggling to stay cool as extreme temperatures hit in regions from north to south. For scientists, this comes as no surprise. They've been warning for years that burning fossil fuels is causing global warming, making heat waves more likely and more severe. What is exceptional for Europe? The continent is warming twice as fast as the global average. Scientists from the Copernicus Climate Observatory program think this is linked to various factors. Like Europe's proximity to the Arctic, the more ice that melts there, the fewer sun rays are sent back into space. The result? The region heats up even more. Another factor is Europe's shrinking rivers and lakes caused by severe droughts in recent years. Since land warms up faster than water, it gets even warmer in summer. And there might be a contribution of aerosol reduction too. We clean our air, uh, our industrial processes and transport are cleaner than before and this clean the atmosphere. So there is a, a positive trend uh, in terms of radiation in Europe. So it's more, more sunshine hours every year. Um, so all this combined can play a role. Then there is a super fast warming of the Mediterranean Sea, which is contributing to heat waves and more extreme droughts in the south. The dark red colors on this map show areas that are more than 5 degrees above the seasonal average. Heat, known as the silent killer, is a serious health risk for everyone, but particularly for elderly people, those with illnesses and children. As the hot weather continues, civil authorities keep warning residents. Meanwhile, in Italy, some regions have put restrictions on outdoor work during the peak heat hours. Brenda Eckwurzel is a leading authority on climate change. She's Senior Director of Scientific Excellence with the Union of Concerned Scientists and joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to DW. How concerning is it that Europe's increased temperatures are happening so much earlier in summer? Uh, it's, it's quite concerning. I think it's one of the fingerprints of climate change. For example, looking at the data, March to May in the boreal spring season was the second highest on record. And that was only broken by the highest on record, which happened the prior spring. So are we seeing a shift in temperatures or are we seeing an extension of the, 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 the warm temperatures? Are, are summers getting longer or is everything just being shifted forward? So summers are getting longer and unfortunately for human health, the heat waves are more severe under climate change at this level of climate change. Europe is now the, the world's fastest warming continent. Why is that? 
Uh, there are a couple of really important physical science reasons, partly because the Arctic region to the north of Europe is warming several times faster than the global average. Also, the oceans are warming up, and we saw that just recently uh, in the northeastern North Atlantic Sea, surface temperatures on May 23rd, the peak of a marine heat wave, uh, was the highest since record keeping began in 1979. And combine that with drought conditions and high temperatures, these are preconditions for the heat wave that people are experiencing across many parts of Europe in uh, the recent days and weeks. Okay, so now we have the EU revealing its climate targets to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 90% by uh, 2024. Is that going to be uh, enough? It's really, really important to have severe reduction in emissions of heat-trapping gases and coal, oil, gas, uh, cement manufacturing. These are really, really important. So 90% is a laudable target and as fast as possible is what we need. OK, but we have at the same time uh, the Trump spending bill, which is going to deliver a huge blow to renewable energy. He has an administration full of climate deniers. How much does, that, does it matter that the world's biggest carbon polluter is so out of step with the rest of the world on this issue? It matters greatly because the United States, if you look at historical cumulative emissions, is the largest contributor to global warming today. And therefore, the great strides that were taken to uh, reduce emissions through spending at the federal government level energy projects, infrastructure projects that are uh, underway. It looks like these uh, bills that are recently before the Senate and, and the House in Congress, uh, a lot of them are looking to slow or reverse some of those advances. However, there is a note of hope. A lot of members of Congress want those uh, contracts that are in their districts, which many of them are, in especially rural areas and many uh, many members of Congress, they want the ones that were committed to go forward. So we think that might survive the current round of negotiations. Okay. Uh, of course, when, it, when I, I mentioned the European targets, that was by 2040 rather than by last year, as I think I said. Um, every year, we see lives lost because of extreme weather and climate-related events, and the financial costs are huge. Does the lack of urgency to tackle climate change and global warming, does that still surprise you? It would if I were just wearing my climate scientist hat. And in fact, I was quite uh, surprised by the continued lack of action. However, I have learned through social science and other areas of his science history that many people have been deliberately misinformed about the facts. And therefore, uh, we see that the, the impacts of climate change are awakening many people because they see it, they experience it. These heat waves are more severe than they remember as children or that their parents or grandparents experienced. So it's hard to deny the facts that are on the ground. Yet, there's also misinformation about the power and momentum of solutions, such as the actions you say uh, Europe is taking to reduce 90% of the emissions. We would like it to be sooner. 2040 is an ambitious target. On the way to 90% reductions, a lot of innovation, a lot of jobs, support for the economy are also going to be benefits of taking action on climate change. OK, thank you so much for talking us through that. To Brenda Eckwurzel uh, from the uh, Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you so much. Well, Carl Friedrich Schleusner is a scientific advisor to climate analytics and an honorary professor at the Humboldt University here in Berlin. Welcome to DW. Should Europe have been better prepared for this heat wave? Well, this is the science of the climate crisis. And unfortunately, we see that even a, a world region like Europe that has a high adaptive capacity and generally good foresight and some of the best scientific advice in the world is not prepared for events like this. So you can imagine how the climate extremes are hitting countries around the world at this time of the day. Yeah, but 
It may have the, the, the a high adaptive capacity. It may, you can have all the science you like. But if your politicians, if the people in charge of the money are, are sitting on their hands, then none of that counts for anything. Well, um, first and foremost, we are battling the climate crisis by bringing down emissions on a race to net zero to stop the climate crisis forever further intensifying. So I think that's the first and foremost priority that we need to keep in mind. And then, yes, indeed, uh, we are seeing that the climate crisis is very much upon us. It's not a question of the future, and we are not prepared. We haven't experienced anything like that in that extent and magnitude even in Europe. Uh, and we are seeing that our systems are being pushed to limits, and it's uh, we really need to step up our game also when it comes to climate adaptation and dealing with those crises. Let's talk about the, the stepping up of, of that of the game for climate adaptation. Where do you see it being done well? It's very tricky to say where it's being done well because societies around the world are being uh, faced with new and different challenges. If you just recall, for example, our neighboring country of here from Germany and Switzerland had a massive landslide in relation to to uh, uh, its mountainous environments just a couple of weeks, months ago. Um, other countries are battling tropical cyclones, massive flooding, wildfires uh, that we are also now seeing here, massive heat. The climate crisis has many faces and many, many perils, and societies around the world ex are experiencing unprecedented extremes, uh, and um, we are all in this together. So, so uh, okay, but talk to us about the, the what's going on here in Europe. Where do you look around Europe and say, right, they have the right idea. That was a good thing to do. That's good policy. I think it's very tricky to say what is good policy. I think there are obvious things that we need to do. We need to have cooling rooms. We need to see how we... Uh, um, uh, reduce urban heat island effects in cities. We need more green spaces. We need uh, um, to look after elderly. We need to identify vulnerable populations and in particular focus on them. But we also need to appreciate the fact that our infrastructure hasn't been built for a climate that we are experiencing today. Uh, and that it's going to take us a lot of time and investment in order to adapt. And we are going to see the economic impacts of it, as we've also seen in the clip that you've just shown, how, for example, in the building sectors, workers' are, uh, workers capacity is drastically re reduced um, because of the extreme heat stress. So it is a challenge. It's a challenge uh, that we're all in together. And some countries, in particular those that have ex more experience with extreme heat waves, for example, like France that had a terrible heat wave in 2003, has slightly better early warning systems and also adaptation systems in place. Right. But I wouldn't say anyone in Europe uh, is prepared for what is here and what is yet to come. Thank you for talking us through that. Uh, Karl Friedrich Schleusner uh, from uh, Humboldt University. Thank you so much. Thank you.